Good evening, streamers. Welcome to Phoenix, and you can now visit this area of the country. From now on, you can visit. It is going to be incredible. Better than Hawaii from here on in. <clears throat> from here on in, it's going to be great. Notice that's faith speak. Yes, it is. Yes, it was That was faith, all right, because... Oof. Wow, this has been bad here this year, streamers. 10 degrees over normal for the whole darn month. That's nuts. Yep. All right, where was I? Good evening, welcome to our Tuesday night Bible study. And our next seminar, the Halloween seminar, went fantastic. Our next seminar is November 25th. Streamers, you can catch me on the radio anytime you want to locally here morning and afternoon on these stations or you can catch it on the website soundcloud.com slash hardcore dash Christianity thank you for your donations the bill the bills are paid thanks to you so it's been great they always get paid hey um, <clears throat> you can donate more money to us but not out of your pocket. If you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in Hardcore Christianity, they'll uh, pay us when you search for stuff on the internet. It's that simple. Saturday, I'll be in the most demon-infected area in the United States. Where's that at? Vegas. <laughs> close. Boston. Vegas was close. <clears throat> I'll be on Skid Row. I never seen anything like it. Last time I was there, I could not believe my eyes. I do this all the time. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Going to take another shot at them. Hey, uh, the uh, Joy in Our Town TV show gave me a bonus show this month for November. So they gave me uh, two extra shows on this month. So I'll be the most featured speaker. <laughs> <laughs> on joy in our town. Can you imagine that? See, uh, you heathens don't know that I'm a celebrity. That's your problem. That's your problem. <laughs> well, let's skip that crap and get to something really good. And this is really, <clears throat> really good. What is church supposed to be like? Let's check it out. It's in Romans chapter 12. Uh, but before we do chapter 12, let's go through the whole book. And as we mentioned every week, um, Romans is the most important book in the Bible in terms of understanding what is Christianity? How does it work? What are the ABCs of it? He kind of puts it all together in Romans for us. Okay? And then he kind of does the same thing for the Jews in Hebrews, so to speak. But here's the chapters and what they information they focus on and we did chapter 8 uh, a couple weeks ago and 9 and 10 is on the nation of Israel not a specific Jew but the nation of Israel Correct. and <clears throat> each specific Jew has to get saved the nation of Israel is already saved the nation of Israel will never cease to exist but each individual Jew will if they don't receive Christ. That's so correct. for you to get saved, Christ, Jew to get saved, Christ. Right. There's no more Jews and Gentiles. Like There's no, huh? Like that Hagee doctrine. Hagee, no, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, that's bull feathers. Right. Everybody has to get saved yeah. individually, but the nation of Israel is special and eternal. Yes. Right. It seems that there's more people over there that are Ashkenaz, Ashkenazi Jews than are actually of the so I'm just kind of curious how that... Well, Ashkenazis are European Jews. Yeah, yeah. So Russia are the other. So that, two part of Europe. Ashkenazi Jews? Yeah. yeah, they're from Europe. But are they born again? No. Okay, well, they're going to go to hell. Some now, <clears throat> the nation of Israel will never go to hell. Just like anybody else. Right. But the Ashkenazi Jews and all the other Jews, the Mushamaka Jews, the Middle Middle, <laughs> whatever they are. All right. You've got to get <laughs> saved and born again. Jesus yes. said, you must be born again. That's an individual experience. 
Okay, there's no Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, That's right. male nor female. Amen. None of that makes any difference. You're either born again or you're not, but the nation of Israel is a different subject. Okay. The nation of Israel is eternal. Yes. <clears throat> and the day is coming when the nation of Israel, they'll all be born again, so to speak. Yes, right? oh, the whole, absolutely. Yeah, yes. absolutely. King David reigns, yeah. Yeah, King David reigns. Good. Okay, and then 12 through 15, chapter 12 is what we're on tonight. Paul starts to lay out born-again Christian Gentile heathen doctrines. The Gentiles and heathens have come in. Now they're born again. Now he's trying to set this thing up for us. This is our section. Okay. And then he takes off with it. There's a lot of interesting laws in Romans. I just listed them for fun. I'm not sure anybody's interested in that, but there are different things Paul calls, calls a law, which are interesting Bible studies, if you want to do that on your own. And that's chapter 12. Now, it starts out in verse 1. <clears throat> Paul went through all of this. We're delivered from, at chapter 8, we're delivered from sin and the law. He goes through all of this about the nation of Israel. Now, he says, in light of all that, you, not the nation of Israel, your body, your body, you've got a body and it's sitting right there. Correct? Yes. Now he's talking about your body, the body of the born-again believer. Your body is to be presented as a living sacrifice. <clears throat> in Romans, he already showed in the Israel chapters that the atonement was a temporary covering for sin, so they sacrificed animals to God to c temporarily cover our sin. They would kill a goat and so on. Now, the body sacrificed to God is your body, not an animal body. <clears throat> Christ sacrificed his body for our salvation. Now God is saying, you must sacrifice your body to God. That's what he wants you to give him. It's not asking too much, is that what you said? Hmm. We'll get, our next Bible study next week is on deceived Christians. <laughs> now, <clears throat> your body is a rotten piece of crap that will fight you every inch of the way. Amen. It says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, not killing a goat, holy and acceptable to God, which is, logikos, after you read all those chapters, 1 through 11, <laughs> you're thinking about it, and bingo, it just makes sense. Oh, now I get it, yeah. I'm, not, I'm going to sacrifice my body to God. What is that? What did Paul call that in another book? Dying to self. Sacrifice your body, and it's only reasonable or rational. It makes co pure common sense after reading those previous chapters. It all just fits. You must not do this anymore. This is useless. You don't need goats and steers and cows. Now, this is what you sacrifice to God, your body. See those little kids that are praying? They're trying to sacrifice their body or turn their body over for God's service. See? And it's your body that ultimately gets you in trouble. You have a thought, you speak it out, your body blabs it out. See? Tongue, lips, I'm blabbing something. Now I'm in trouble. It's your body. A thought, ooh, hot babe, ooh, a lust hits the body, then the body goes into fornication. Holy crap, now the demons are rushing in and you're dead in the water. It's your, yeah. You live and you die by your mouth. Yeah. That's more or less what you're saying. And I, you know, I mean, I read that in scripture. You live, I mean, you, well, you say right. things out she of your said, mouth and it's kind of You live and die by your mouth. That's true, but what you're saying is a product of. Your system, yeah. your inner man and your yeah. outer man. So you're having a thought, you're putting that thought verbally, and you're using your body to express it. I'm using my voice, my tongue, my lips, and so on. You use your body to express your lust. See? Masturbating, fornicating, adultery, bestiality, pedophilia, whatever it is. Right? So Paul's saying we can 
stop this horrible process if you'll sacrifice your body to God. And he says, when you do that, suske matizo, that's like a sketch. Oops. Have you ever been, uh, the county fair just wrapped up. <clears throat> I mean, say state fair, yeah. Arizona State Fair was just here, right? And there was guys over there for, for 10 bucks. They would sketch you or your family, you know? There you are. And this is causing a lot of jealousy right now. There's the people, and that's 10 bucks, okay? And that's what that is. He's sketching something that looks like that, okay? Paul says, don't behave like that's over there. See them over there? Lying, cheating, killing, murdering, fornicating, politicians. Don't act like, don't sketch your life after them. Yes. Okay? Don't do that because they belong to this age and this age is going to perish in the tribulation. Okay? So don't sketch yourself after somebody else or something else. But be... Metamorpho, morph yourself, morph yourself into what? Your mind has to, kindness, you morph yourself like a caterpillar into a butterfly. See? Your mind into morph the mind of Christ. You morph your mind into the mind of Christ. You cannot do that. If you are living in a pattern of this world, see your body is following that behavior, you can't do it. You are not to pattern yourself after these people out on Indian school. You are to fresh. You need a fresh new way of thinking and processing life. Yes. See? And that is the number one anachinesis. To renovate your mind from what it was here to there is the number one uh, pain in the butt in the deliverance ministry. Number one. Without even a second. Getting some people literally, no matter what happens to them, absolutely will not renew, renovate their mind. They won't do it. <clears throat> it is so tough. Other people will. So when they do, they morph into the way Jesus thinks. Yes. You renovate your mind into the way the mind of Christ. This is what he's saying. Mind. It's all in here. Click. It's in your mind. You turn, go from that, a lust-ridden, stupid, ignorant, asinine, goofy, heathen, Gentile sinner... <laughs> to a drop-dead, gorgeous, Holy Ghost preaching, devil-smashing saint of God. Oh, that was worded well. Oh, I got it there. That just flowed off my head. I see the jealousy. That's what a metamorph, that morph, you must morph your... This will never become that again. Amen. Anachinesis, fresh, fresh and new, fresh. That's a fresh butterfly, but this thing here was eating a bunch of crap all the time. Boom, he turned into that. <laughs> See, He's, this guy's eating God's word, word of God, praying, worshiping, spiritual things, repenting, changing your life, getting rid of the kooks in your life, reading the word, changing your behavior. Boom! Good God, you turned into some massive Holy Ghost person. <laughs> See it? You morphed into, Paul said. Why? Why do you need to do that? Well, you've got to be able to test the world. Akamazo, testing, examining by testing. What is God's good, acceptable, Eurostas, pleasing? What is pleasing to God? Here's what it is. What's pleasing to God is you taking his perfect will for your life and Submitting your body, sacrificing it, and giving yourself for that perfect will. It's different from all of us. 
We all have one call, God's perfect will, and that's it. You know, as preachers say, you got your perfect will and you got a permissive will. Yes. Right. This is talking about God's perfect will. What is God's good? How do you test that? See, you don't automatically know it. You don't automatically know what God's perfect will is for you. It's a process of discerning and learning. It's a path you travel along the way, discovering, failing, succeeding, learning, progressing as Father leads you through the cliffs, through the dips, down the valley, up the mountain. And while you're making that journey, you're testing. Okay, should we turn right or left? Shall I say this or that? See, you, you test it as you go. Your Christian life is a process, but you will never get there if you've sketched yourself after the heathen. <clears throat> You'll never make it. It's impossible. Teleos, mature or complete. And that's all of our goals in life. I'll just speak for you for a minute. Your goal is to find out God's perfect will and then go down that path until you reach maturity and you're there doing whatever he's called to do, whatever it is. Okay. But in, our, in America, there's so many useless, gutless, kitty, kitty Christians, they never mature. They start out okay and then they flop for a while. They never reach full maturity. They're always baby Christians. They're always flopping and then getting up and flopping and getting up. They never renewed their mind because they're still in part sketching themselves after heathens. And so this, that's not God's good or his pleasing or his mature will for your life. Verse 3, I say through the grace given to me that every man not to think more highly of himself or how he ought to think. Duh! Now he switches over to just common sense. If you start getting pride or vanity or something like that, that's a sketch of the world. They all have pride and vanity. Trump, Clinton. Imagine these two psychos. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable what's going on. But here, they have this problem. They see themselves far more highly than they ought to think. Clinton sees herself as president when she's in fact a convict. Uh, tr Trump sees himself as a multi-millionaire when in fact, in fact he's, he should be running a food stamp factory. Okay, so these people have got what? Satan's pride. That's what got the devil. That was his greatest sin. He's a narcissist. Pride killed him. So what do you got to do? Hey, you got to have a rational view of yourself, right? For God has dealt, Marizo, portioned out to every man, a metron, a portion of faith. So when you got born again, you got the same amount he got. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. Everybody got the same, okay? So you're starting the race here. You're born again here, see? And you start out, you are distributed the same portion of faith. There's your faith. Everybody gets the same amount. And one, two, three, go. Then what happens to this faith depends on the person. Did they stop patterning themselves after the world? Did they sacrifice their body a living sac it's all the free will of the person okay your free will here was to receive Christ God's free will was to give you a portion of faith click God wants you to be a mature will of God whatever it is and you see some people as they go along, they, 
develop at a completely different rate. Everybody's like fingerprints. Nobody grows at the same rate. It's all based on free will. Everybody got the same slice of pizza when they got saved. The yeah, same size, same kind. There it is. Whatever it is. Some kind of heavenly pizza. That got me out of it. And everybody got the same slice, the same kind. See? I didn't ask for a Hawaiian. That's the best kind of pizza. Have you ever had a Hawaiian? Oh, yeah. oh that's scary. That's sinful. Oh. Oh, oh, stop it. Oh. God. Everybody got the same piece of cheese pizza. <laughs> but what that pizza grows into or sinks into is depending on you. <clears throat> and then he says, let me illustrate it for you this way. It's like a human body. See, we have many members in our body. Melas, we have all kinds of body parts. I got fingers, hands. Feet, legs, but they are not exactly the same. So a hand is not the same as a foot. See? Melos, body parts. See all the different body parts on this poor sick guy? He didn't even have any stomach there, but we being many are one body. The whole total body is Christ. We are the parts of the body. Every part's different. Ear, finger. Foot, hand. The whole body, Christ the Lord, is what he's saying. Okay? Then, he's trying to tell them that, listen, we are all one. The fingers are part of the same body. The toes are. Mm -hmm. So the fingers don't hate the toes because without the toes, the body can't walk anywhere. That makes sense. The ears aren't pissed off at the butt because <laughs> then you couldn't sit down and listen. So the ears like the butt. The butt likes the ears. See, the whole body fits together yes. because the total body is symbolically Christ, the Lord. So there's no uh, greater person in the body. Feet, fingers, hands. They're all part of the same body and all get the same glory and the same credit. It's one body. So your gifting may be different than hers, but you're not better than her. Right. It's just different. There's a difference there. Your ministry may be different than that person, but it's not better. Right. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, rebellion. Okay, Cora. Lord, shall I do it? No? All right. See, it's the body in Christ, and we are the members, or the melos, body parts. There he is again, this poor sick guy, but there's a hand. It's just as important as that ear. They have different functions, but they're all part of the same body, Christ the healer. Romans 6, 12, 6, having gifts differing. Everybody's got different gifts. Okay. And that's given to you by grace. God gives grace to each person, and they have different gifts. All gifts are given to you by grace. You don't earn them. They're given by grace and mercy. So he says, for example, let's take one gift, he says. Let's take prophecy. Well, you prophesy according to your gift of faith. So let's say, so let's, then let's say, uh, five people have the gift of prophecy. Five body parts, parts belonging to the body of Christ. But each one has a different now, a portion. They were all started out with the same portion. Now, down the road, each has a different portion. So this one prophesies greater things than this one, things than that one, and so on. Okay, same thing. Super healing gift here, great healing gift here, good one here, great. Different by each person decides on their own what level they go to of pistis. 
they all started out with the same pistis, but not everybody develops it at a different rate. Then he says, diakonia, waiting on people. That's the word for a waiter, a servant, see? So he says, in any ministry, any ministry, it works this way, he's saying. In any ministry, you start out with the same gift portion of faith that person has. They all got the same one. And then they're all developed at a different rate, depending on that person's dedication, interest, motivation, desire, free will, etc., etc. And then he's saying here, what he's really saying is, to sum it up quickly, anything you get into works this way technically. Pick out the ministry, and then he mentions a few. Here's one ministry, here's teaching, here's somebody who exhorts or encourages others. See? And then Paul's saying they're all body parts, but none of them are better than the other ones. They're all part of one body. And that's the main emphasis. See? Prophecy, ministry, encouragement, whatever you got going. <clears throat> And what do you do with your ministries? You do what? What? Obviously, obviously. metadidomy. You sh you share it all with those in need, whatever your ministry happens to be: prophecy, healing, uh, anointing. Uh, you <laughs> see, you share it with according to your proportion of faith that you have developed over your Christian walk. That's why ministers all have different levels of anointing, even when they have the same gifts. And he's saying there, don't think of yourself great or higher than you ought to think, because these gifts come to you by grace. You don't earn them. And you just act like a simple person. Be a real person. Yes. You see, it's not a crefo dollar thing where you go to the thing or Benny Hinn, you fly in on a chopper. Go to a limousine. That's the crap that God doesn't want you to do. You're just a regular person. Be a simple person. Don't be better than other people. Because that's a delusion. Okay. Here are rulers, people that, uh, directors, leaders. That's what that mean. means. Do it with diligence. Eliel. Compassion. Do it with cheerfulness. See? What he's really saying in all these scriptures is just get down to earth. Just be a down to earth person. Don't be a Benny Hinn or a, or a Creeflow dollar. Oh, I'm, I'm like a god. Kenneth Copeland. We're all gods. Well, dude, cut the god crap. Just love somebody and be a nice person and yes. just care about something. Yes. You can worry about your god crap when you get to heaven. <laughs> See what he's saying there? Yes. Oh, yeah. So these body parts, this is Jesus Christ there. No offense. But here's the body parts of Christ. And so none of these parts are better than the other. They're just different, Paul said. Everything's different. And the level of the gifts are given differently as you develop your pistis in your administration and management of the gift that you got by grace that you didn't earn. Hey, I'm a great person. No, it came from grace. Yes, that's right. Then he goes to verse 9, and then he goes to the, the, the number one gift, which is love. Now, there's all kinds of different loves, but the God kind of love, Anupakritas, is sincere, genuine love. See? Not the church crap love. That's the stuff where they come in and go, how you doing? Give them a hug. Bless you, brother. Run to your seat. That's, that's just social love. Okay? He's saying, listen, don't fake it. Don't fake loving people. You have to actually love them. Okay? And then he tells them, Apostle Gail, whatever is evil, since you did not sketch yourself by the world, you have now morphed your mind into the mind of Christ. Christ sees all sin and wickedness as evil. 
see. He doesn't see it like people see it. People see evil and they go, oh, there's an opportunity or there's something fun or there's an, there's an advantage. No, Christ sees it as abhorring it. He abhors evil. He finds it disgusting. See? So as you renew your mind, fresh, renewed mind, as you sketch, turn your body over to the Lord as a sacrifice to God on the altar, like an animal, you will kolao, glue yourself to that which is glue, good. Okay? It's the same thing as getting married, kolao. Same word, yeah. same Greek word. When you get married, you're glued to that person, that's what Paul said. Yeah. So, evil, I abhor that. Here's something good, glue, yes. super glue it. <laughs> There's a good person. See, I'm stuck to him. I won't do the other one. That was mine. And then do what? He's telling you how you're supposed to interact at church, and none of this happens. What happens in most churches is pride, ego, vanity, and arrogance seep in, and then suddenly you have people getting offended, wounded, hurt, bolting to another church, church hopping again. They won't go back to that church. This guy pissed me off. Boop, 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 boop. So Paul is saying the opposite of it is this. If you're kindly affectionate to one another in brotherly love, Meaning, the finger is just as good as the head <coughs> in your eyes. None of the body parts are better, they're just different, is what he's trying to tell us. None of the gifts are better, they're just different. And nobody will take an offense if they put the other person ahead of them. Duh. And so the offenses come when you, when you butt yourself in front of somebody. You got something the pastor didn't give me? Oh, that pisses me off. Oh, gosh. See, you're pushing, you're trying to push yourself ahead of that person. Oh, you got a blessing. Where's mine? See, you're, you're, you, in a way, you're spiritually cutting in line. See? While you serve the Lord, you sacrificed your body, a living sacrifice. What should you do with your body? Ocnerous. You shouldn't be late or tardy or lazy with it. Amen. Nobody, don't, <laughs> nobody, nobody likes somebody who's slothful or lazy or late all the time. It makes everybody, it frustrates everybody. So don't do that. You run your business honestly fervently and where does your spiritual power come from what well, comes from your spirit man Dale you must make the water boil is what Paul's talking about he wants your spirit man boiling have you ever seen water boil it's busy in there it's ready yeah. see Paul's saying it's ready it's busy and you must only you have to do that to be able to do this Leul is work as a slave. You can't work as a slave and not have your spirit man boiling because you'll get fired. You'll get tardy. You'll get lazy. You'll get slothful if you're not eager to do the things of God, repent and change. Yes. See what he's saying there? Yes. Brilliant material. This has to come before that. You can't do this without that. This person here without that will just drudge their way through it. See? Why do marriages suck? The boiling goes out of it. And the routine sets in. See? And so then it becomes drudgery. Right. See? It's like the march in the Wizard of Oz. Oh, we, oh. Well. Everybody poops and farts. Listen, the boiling water keeps this thing firing. God's talking to me again. He just can't help himself. Wait a minute, I'll be with you. I know your works. Speaking of boiling, I took a detour here quickly. Revelation 3 is the megachurch chapter. This is the chapter about megachurches. They had megachurches back then. We got... 20 of them in the valley here. 22, no, 22. 22 mega churches in the valley, in just in Maricopa County. Can you imagine that? 22 of them. I know your works, 
you are neither cold nor hot. Why? Cold is good and hot is good. See? He said, I wish you were cold. Cold is great on a hot day. Hot is great on a cold day. It's got its uses. Very good. But because you're lukewarm, these two are lukewarm, don't do, they're bad. See, they exist, but they're not working. Christians exist now, but they're not working. And this is the Greek word, emeo, meaning to vomit. It's the only time in the New Testament that word is used. One time, spit was used in the New Testament, right? Yes. <laughs> Put it on his eyes, remember that? Mm -hmm. But vomit wasn't. Jesus didn't vomit on the blind man, like a YouTube video. No. He spit. Go wash. Okay? Here he's saying, listen, you're, you're a Christian, and you're down deep inside the kingdom of God, but guess what? You can be expelled. Blah. If you do what? what do you you got to meet the criteria. What is that? Jeez. Go lukewarm on him. And when you go lukewarm, you become lackadaisical. You lose your edge. You're not boiling in there anymore. You're coasting. The difference between boiling and is settled. It's settled. See? I just did that yesterday. I made a pot for my hummingbirds in Sun City. Okay. I live in Sun City where all the old people are, and there's a lot of old hummingbirds out there. <laughs> so I make them a pot because they don't want to go anywhere. They're just too lazy to go anywhere. They just want somebody to feed them because they're old and lazy. I did. I had that thing boiling. See, then I turned that sucker off. It started to go down. Sugar. Then I put the red dye in. Then I had called 911 to get it off my hands. <laughs> Have you ever had red dye on your hands? <laughs> God almighty. Don't you see what he's saying here? You're, you're coasting. See, while you're boiling, the blessings are heaving into your life. See? Now you get tempted, and now the blessings, you start taking them for granted. Yes. Yes. What they're doing there is their boil went down to the leveled off. It's not boiling anymore. It's heading toward lukewarmness. See? I have to get it to lukewarm because I can't get that pot <laughs> to put it in a pitcher when it's real hot. Because if I drop it or something, I have uh, wife-itis. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want wife-itis. Oh, yeah. Take my word there. <laughs> These guys went tepid, lukewarm, and suddenly they are taking for granted all the blessings that came in during the boil period. And he points out the blessings the Holy Ghost shipped them during their boils. There they are. He increased their goods. He met all their needs. See it? It's, to me it's clear. Edu, don't you see? Don't you see? But you're really wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Perfect description of a mega church. Right. Couldn't be any better. Why? The, th the thing was on boil when they started the mega church. Everybody's on fire. God brings in all the blessings. Boom! Huge crowds. Bang! There's the system. There's the video. Oh, they got it all here. Now we're coasting. The devil got them coasting. The boil turned down. And now they became wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And Jesus said, I want you to get back to the boiling point like it's being tried in the fire. And he says, hey, let me give you another illustration. Instead of boiling, we'll take gold. Because they all knew about gold. Right? Gold was the most important thing in the world back then. Everybody wanted gold, right? Not today, but back then they did, right? 
So, look at we need gold tried in the fire. Oh, now it gets a little depressing. After you have been boiling and you got the benefits of God, when you go lukewarm to get back to here, you must be tried. Yes. This period of trying to get back there during the trials, the persons usually flake out and don't come back. They don't make it. That's why they, the Bible says, now you're worse than you were. It had been better for you not to have done that. Now you're worse off. I see it all the time in deliverance. They go out, they start sinning again, they pick up demons, we can't get out. They come back here, hey, get these demons, and they won't come out. So now you've got to be, you got to have them beaten out of you. See? Tried in the fire. Before you were boiling, and then you turned it off, you fell into complacency, taking your blessings for granted. Now you're lukewarm. Now you're wretched. You're poor. You suck. How do you get back to boiling and all the blessings, Lord? You got to go through the fire now. You let the fire go down. Now you got to go through the fire. What I'm teaching right now is never taught in a church anywhere in America. Otherwise, they'd be tarred and feathered. I don't care about tar and feathering. Somebody keep it. Is Karina? She left? Somebody's got to get on her. He says, if you go back through the fire, okay, I'm not just going to put you back there. <laughs> Click your back. Oh, have a good time. Whee! Not going to happen. Once you get back there, you go through the fire. Now you get back to boiling. Yes. Now, he says, you can get what I want for you to have. Oh, are you listening? Yes. The, minist the ministry you wanted here, you screwed the pooch. Uh -huh. And you lost it. Because you turned the fire down. You start to take things for granted. You became wretched and poor. But then you change your mind. And Jesus said, change your mind and come back to boiling. And then you will get what you wanted and didn't have patience for then. You wanted to wear the white raiment. You can't get the white raiment unless you go back through the fire. How's the devil stop it? While you're going through that process, he will heap shame on you Absolutely. and embarrassment. See, oh my God, look at all these mistakes I made. Look at all these failures. Look at all these sins. Oh, I hate myself. See, he'll heap shame on you when you're trying to get back to the boiling point. And when you get back there, bang, you're ready to go. This did not start out looking like that. It was a chunk of crap out of a mountain. Somebody refined that thing. That's the Holy Ghost refining you. See? You were boiling. You had all these blessings. But then all of a sudden, you got a little casual. And then you started to sketch yourself after the world. Let me see. I'm Cree Flow Dollar. Hmm. All the business executives have jets and limos. Click. I'll pattern myself after jets and limos. See? And then it sinks. I had a guy say to me one time in counseling, well, wait a minute. Why should I give my life to Christ now? Uh, this, person, this person got saved when they were old. I said, what's your point? He said, well, they got to sin all their life. I said, dude, look, it's not getting to sin. That's something you want to avoid. You're picking up demons. You're miserable. You're sick. You're wretched. You're poor. You're blind. You're naked. You're an imbecile, and you suck. You want to avoid that, dude. I didn't make much progress with him. Anoint your eyes so you can see. See, what the devil does is 
He gets you to conform to the world. He gets you a little lukewarm where you're taking everything for granted. And then what he does is he just you're just blind to what he's doing. It's almost like the frog in the, in the boiling pot. He, don't, he doesn't sense it coming off of him. And you need eye salve, the anointing. Oh my God, what did I do? Now I see it. You're, you're, you're doing this for years and you don't see what is causing it. You're not seeing the root of it. And Jesus said, listen, uh, skip the people I love. The people I'm fond of, I do this for. I do this for everybody. Phileo, I'm fond of you. I like you. It wasn't love. It was mistranslated. So even the ones I like, I do that too. How much more the ones I love? Yes. I do what? Elenco. I convict them to get the boiling point back. Turn up the fire. I chasten you, I discipline you, and I convict you. Be eager, anxious, and zealous to change and repent. Go back to boil. See? And then the blessings will start coming in, and you won't be wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked anymore. Then he says to the Christians, not the sinners, I'm standing at the door of your life, your heart, your mind, whatever it is. If any Christian hear my voice, this was written to Christians. Yes. This is a verse used to uh, convert sinners. And you can use it for that, but it's actually taken out of context. I will come to him, and I will sit down and have dinner with you again. Okay? But I don't want to eat a lot of lukewarm food. Uh, I'll sit and eat, but let's turn the heat up. I want this hot. I want that hot. I want this cold. I don't want it lukewarm. And then I'll eat with you. This is in form of John 17, the prayer that Jesus prayed. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Yes. John 17. Go back to Romans then. Let's skip back to our uh, text. 12, verse 12, Romans 12, 12. Then he says, add this to your repertoire. Rejoicing in hope. Here's why people backslide and go back into sin. They lose their gratefulness and they lose their hope. Mm -hmm. See, what the devil does is he gets the person to slip into a state of doubt for their future. Yeah. Then he gets them to doubt their decisions. Yeah. Holy crap, should I have gone that way or this way? Then he gets them to look at their circumstances. Things aren't going right now. Oh, I must have made a mistake. Oh, I screwed myself. Oh, God. And then their hope tanks. As soon as their hope tanks, the joy disappears. Because the joy is kind of a kissing cousin of hope. See? You can take a bad beating here, but if you've got hope, this is durable. Endur endurable. Um, you can endure that if you have hope. See? Opomeno. Opomeno. You can endure it. You can push your way through. But only if you are able to have hope, which causes you to rejoice. So, Paul had hope of his home and glory. So when he whipped him in the head, he was able to endure it because he had joy of speakable and full of glory, and he had his hope of his future. So what this Jew or Roman was doing at that moment wasn't wiping him out. In other words, he didn't have a rejection demon. Had he had rejection demons, he would have collapsed on the first beating and gone into self-pity, doubt, and unbelief. But he kept his hope, and he kept rejoicing in it. So he had endurance. Hupomeno. Right? And he had... Philipsis, when they put the pressure on him, the pressure on him, he was able to get through it. Okay? So, but when you lose your hope, you can't get through. You can't make it through. If you think that this current experience, which is a massive suck, is your future, you can't make it to your future. You start 
sinking. Is that making sense? Yes. If you think in your mind that this circumstance that you're involved in right now, that's your life, you are screwed, blued, and tattooed. You're finished. Because your hope is gone. If you think this is it. See? And the devil will put pressure on you to think that way and feel that way. He'll use other people to pressure you to feel that way and think that way. He knows what he's doing. Because if he can steal your hope, he'll nail your joy and your rejoicing. Once he's got that out of you, he can leave you stuck in a dungeon. And you'll never get out. Stuck in a dungeon. Paul said, hey, screw the dungeon. Silas, give me that old gospel hymn. And they're sitting there think, singing Amazing Grace. Okay, What's Paul doing? He's in the stocks. He's bleeding. He stinks. He pooped his pants. Silas peed all over. They're sitting there in their own feces with no hope and nothing in life. They're going to be executed. No, wrong. Rejoicing in hope got them out of that. Boom! There's an earthquake. See? Paul wasn't going to go lukewarm on them. He wasn't going to take this stuff for granted. Well, you know what, Silas, buddy? We had a good run. Now it's over, pal. No, that wasn't his attitude. No, his run wasn't over. Hope. My run's not over. I got... And since I got hope, I'm rejoicing. Prescott or ale. What does that mean? Being sincere in prayer. Okay? It's not the table stuff. Lord bless his flute. Yea, God. Amen. That, that, those prayers are useless. They couldn't. We might as well not even pray over your food. food. It's not a food prayer. Lord bless my dinner. Hallelujah. Amen. That isn't going to work. He's saying here, you've got to have... Pressuring sincere petitions to God. Now, verse 13. If you do that, God will give you the true riches in life, helping others. Yes. That didn't go over good, but I hope it went over with the streamers. Here is the greatest gift of life, because your eternal rewards are based on it. Yes. So you may sit at home, God gave you an incredible anointing for painting. And you go, Lord, thanks for this incredible anointing for painting. I'm so gifted. It's unbelievable. And you paint 15 portraits and you put them in your bedroom. You drop dead. You head to the judgment seat of Christ. And then you end up with the TV preachers with nothing. And you go, what am I doing over here with the TV preachers not getting any rewards? You didn't read Romans and you didn't go to the house of healing. Here is the key to life in your future. See, the first thing Paul did when he got out of the stocks, hey, don't kill yourself. See, he went right to that centurion. Yes. See? Yes. Here's your spiritual killer 10,000 years from tonight. You helped somebody else. Hospitality is helping someone else. Then he says, this you ain't going to believe. He says, now, you're helping these people that have needs, and you're helping these people that are your friends, or they've come to your church. That's cool, but that isn't good enough. If you want to really rack up the rewards and not, in, not end up in the TV preacher line, you do the same thing to people that think you. Dioko means to chase down or pursue, run after. People pursue you with their mouths. They pursue you with their bodies. They say ugly things. They do ugly things. Paul said, listen, you want some rewards, big ones? Do the same thing to the person that came to you for help that's a good person to the crappy one who called you a stinking SOB. Mm -hmm. 
Bless those who are pursuing you with negativity. Bless them. Do not curse them because that's what they're giving you. See? You turn it. Oh, here you go. It's not slap them back. Unless you have the slapping annoying, which I do. <laughs> and I do use it occasionally. Come here. See, bless them, but don't curse them because they're already cursing you. They're pursuing you and they're saying nasty things about you. You're a rotten person. It happened to me this week. Yeah. Somebody, somebody contacts me and goes, hey, that Skyway church out there. I said, I know about Skyway. I've had a bunch of people come in. They're good people. Oh, no, they had a big old uh, deliverance meeting over there. And they were talking about you in the meeting. I said, what are they talking to me for? I don't go over there. They said that you uh, help people get demons and that you pull knives on people. <laughs> I said, they say I pull knives on people? Wow. Well, thanks for the tip. I just, uh, we need to get some Holy Ghost knives around here. <laughs> we'll sell them on the website. Yeah. How am I going to get that new building? Thanks to Skyway. No. They said, you know what else he does? He puts uh, people's problems on the internet and he makes fun of them and makes jerks out of them. They say he's a phony deliverance person. And the, and the lady raised her hand and said, wait a minute, I've been over there at the House of Healing. That guy's not. A phony what are you talking about oh no I had a reliable person go to his meeting and they they came back and told me he pulled a knife on a guy and he's crazy and he's not casting out demons he's giving them demons oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going hey Lord I, I didn't receive that I know I, that is not me I did not pull any knives on him but if you want to give me an anointing for knifing people <laughs> that's your call okay but I don't have that so I don't do that right now <laughs> so the Skyway, they think I suck over here, but I'm blessing them. I'm saying, Lord, that's that that ain't right. Please forgive them. I got a stack of Skyway people who've been over here. Their counselors used to send me their people. I know. And then and then they said, now I'm now I'm slicing throats, and they said, don't want to send anybody over there. You're gonna kill them. Well, I wouldn't send anybody to me either if I'm gonna kill them. It's it's totally stupid. I do. It's right here. The demons are telling them, hey, you idiot. And I'm not going to curse them. They put curse on me. I'm not going to do that. I'm not even receiving that. I'm just laughing that thing off. That's right. I didn't want to Facebook her back because I have hit some people with this holy ghost bottle. <laughs> but I, I never pulled a knife on him, I swear. <laughs> rejoice it with them that rejoice. <clears throat> What's he telling us to do here? Listen, don't be don't be some TV preacher whoring yourself out. Be a regular person, okay, and treat people like you care about them, okay? Don't lord yourself over them and tell them you're great. If they're laughing, go ahead and laugh. If they need, if they need a tear, go ahead and join them. Be a regular person. Just treat, treat people like you, you're a regular person. This isn't TV stuff. This is real world stuff. Yes, it is. That's what he's saying. Then he says that you got to have unity in a church or it will never grow. Right. Duh. Baptists are the worst, aren't they? We went over this. There's 60 different denominations of Baptists. They fight more than any Christian. Well, they don't have the same mind one toward another. Somebody comes up with a new idea. This one doesn't like it. They get in an argument. They leave. Then they start a new church. That's the opposite of what Paul is saying here. Chill yourself out. We've got the basics of the gospel down here, don't we? Uh, most of the dominations have got the basics of the God. We've got the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah, you don't need to fight over pre-trib or post-trib. That's, that's not what we're about here. Just stay focused on the, the good stuff. Amen. And don't get too high-minded, see? That's pride. I want to know more than this. I get emails all the time with people who have that. They say, listen, I, I heard your teaching. It was great, but... The tribulation, this, and they, they fix me up. And then I send them an email, thank you. Uh, help save me. And then I, that's it. See, don't, don't get like you know more than other people. See, just hey, be a regular person is what Paul's kind of saying here. Be, be a regular person. Just, just act like a human freaking being. <laughs> because there's nothing worse than people who are religious. And think they think they know something religious. I mean, they are the most sickening people. <laughs> it is so bad. Okay. 
So no Bible, what does that mean? Hang around with people that are not superstars. Learn to like everybody at every spectrum. Yeah. Okay? Saturday afternoon, I'm going to be hugging homeless people that stink like you can't even believe. Why? Because I read that verse. Treat them like a regular person. Yeah. I'm doing it in Los Angeles. As soon as they get delivered, I'm going to give them a hug. And at first, they'll look at you like you're nuts. Because they won't, because they won't understand what you are trying to do in the beginning. <laughs> Travis is here. I got security. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How to know. <laughs> okay, now look. <clears throat> if you just treat everybody the same, whether they're big shots or income poops, you're going to be okay. See? It's when you get the TV thing going and you go into celebrity or the mega church pastor and then you get a special parking spot, special clothes, special treatment, special this, special that. The devil is giving you all those special things because he wants you to creep up with your little ego and your vanity. So he can blast you down with a scandal. Okay? Do not be wise in your conceits. See? Come on, stop it. Just be a regular person. Don't pay people back for crap. Okay? You cannot get out of this. It's impossible. This can't be avoided in life. You are going to get screwed. By who? Every single person in your life. Even the people that like you are going to do things sometimes that are not in your best interest. Even people that love you will do that. Every one of them. Without it, without it. There's exceptions. Dead people. If, you're, <clears throat> if your relatives are dead, the probability this first will not apply. But if you're alive and somebody's alive around you, it's a 100% guarantee at some point, even good people are going to kind of step on your toes. You can't, you can't get away from it. So Paul says, since none of us can get away from it, and Paul got screwed over left and right, and he, and he spoke about it several times. Hey, you people, did, I got donations from them. You guys didn't give me anything. I worked over here to help. People are always going to step on your toes. Okay? So the way you handle it is you just pull your foot out, and you go, give them a hug and go. You know, it's not like, the, get off my feet, you sucker. See, that's not it. Watch where you're walking. See, that's not where we're going. Screw me. That will screw you. <laughs> See, that's not it. That's not what he's saying here. Let that thing go. Let it go. And if possible, once what's he saying? It's impossible, 100 percent of the time. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't work in the people business and everything go good all the time. It's not going to happen. If possible, <laughs> as much as you can do it, try your best. Live peaceably with all these complete idiots in your family and these morons you work with. Yeah. <laughs> if possible, do your best. That's what he's saying. He knows it's not possible. And he knows you can't do it 100% of the time, for God's sakes. But he says that's what your goal is. You want to live peacefully with people stepping on your toes, people saying negative things to you. People at Skyway said, oh, you're giving people demons. Boom, there's your demon. Let that stuff go. Chill it out. <laughs> now listen, he says, in addition, uh, do not give evil for evil, but upgrade it to this, <clears throat> my dearly beloved Christians. Act of kale. Don't seek vindication for yourself, okay? Listen carefully. Everybody that's got rejection demons always defends themselves, see? If somebody points a finger at them, they immediately point it at somebody else. Oh, but look, they're as bad as I am. He's as, he does the same things I do, and that person is this and that and that and this. 
You follow that? Yeah. Then, then they'll want to take vengeance. Well, give them a whipping. Kick them out. Kick him in the butt. Paul says, whoa, kick. No. Nope. Because if you do that, you're going to orge. You're going to get angry. Why is a person getting angry? They're taking an offense. You don't like my shirt. Now I'm in trouble because I, I do want like that. See, that's offense body language. Okay, now I'm in trouble. Well, what about your shirt? Uh oh, now I'm stepping into the devil's world now. I've entered his world. He's got me, he's sucking me in. See him there? I'm defending myself. Well, your shirt's worse than. Now I'm defending my. And they're going to say to me, no, it isn't. Yours is worse. Now I'm going to start getting angry because they're not listening to me and they don't believe what I said and I'm smarter than them. And I got. Now you're going to get pissed. Right there. See? There's a lot of psychiatry in the New Testament if you just kind of slow it down and put it in people terms. See, and that's what I do. That's all I know is people terms. Right. Listen, if somebody this or that, that or that, no problem. Because I'm not going to get angry. And why do you not want to get angry? Duh, what's the next step? You do something stupid. Say something stupid. Do something stupid. Go somewhere stupid. Quit doing something stupid. Start doing something stupid. You run the gauntlet of asininity. When you're mad, you lose your discernment. <clears throat> and here's why he says don't do it. God will do it. Father heard what they said and did to you. That's not your business. Father will handle that in his own good time. So by faith you have patience and you endure it. Having a rejoicing hope in your future, no matter what they said or did. Yeah. Right. Right. Nothing's going to go unattended to. Okay. Well, they're getting off. Nobody's getting off, is what he's saying. Nobody gets off. Father saw everything. The Holy Ghost saw it. every little thing, recorded it. Everything's ready to go. So don't you do God's job? See. If you take vengeance, what you're saying is, I'm God. Yep. See, you're becoming Kenneth Copeland. I'm a God. Dude, you're not a God. You are not to take vengeance on people. You are to forgive them and release aught for them. Okay, Michael, but what if somebody is coming after you with a knife, a gun, or whatever, okay? Um... I was always taught growing up by, by three brothers that you learn to stand up on your own, okay? You learn to fight your own battles because they wouldn't always be around to be there to protect you. Mm -hmm. But, and I understand what God is saying here, and I do that all the time in my mind. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Right. What about if some, like I said, what if somebody is coming I don't understand no, your question. Choice. I don't understand my, your question. My, my question is, if someone is coming to get you... Get get how? Get violently kill you. Well, that's not what this is talking about. No. Okay, she said, what if somebody comes at you violently attacking you? That's not, that's not what the text is talking about here. Yeah, let's back up here. It's talking about avenging yourself morally. Okay, it's not talking about self-defense. Okay, so somebody comes in with a knife looking for your kids. They may get your kids, but I'll be dead before they get them. You're going to get my kids over my dead body. Right. right? I'm protecting them. I'm not venging myself. See the difference? So her brothers are ignorant. They're just giving her secular advice. Which works sometimes and doesn't work other times. What they were generally saying was, hey, you gotta be a responsible adult and live 
responsibly, and you can't have everybody else doing your stuff for you. They were right, okay? This is divinely inspired material. It's not her brother's. You don't avenge yourself or vindicate yourself morally. Well, that's preposterous. I'm right and you're wrong. If you keep doing that, they won't agree with you and you're going to get angry. And the Lord will do that for you so you can just click chill on it. See? So if somebody comes in here that's taking a swing at her, I'm going to try and get in between it and keep her from getting hit in the head. I'm not trying to morally avenge myself. I'm trying to protect somebody getting hit in the head. Same thing, exactly. Take it with a grain of salt. Perfect. Because God didn't take it with a grain of salt. And if you try to get vengeance on them, you're playing God. See? And that's a sin. Therefore, he says, people who hate you, ekthras, people who hate you, and if he's hungry, go ahead and feed him. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds nuts. <clears throat> the guy comes in your house to attack you. By God's grace, you knock him out. Okay, then you help him get some medical care and pray for him. See what I'm saying? You don't step on his neck, crack it, and then call nine one one. I don't take vengeance on the. It's not my job. I was protecting. I wasn't taking vengeance on the person. So I'm going to help him after. <laughs> He's knocked out. An example. So if you're, if some people who hate you, if they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, go ahead and give them something to drink. Father, you're racking your war, war, rewards up in heaven. Father saw what they did to you, and they will account for that to Father, not you. And these scriptures apply mostly to families. It's mostly family issues where you'll see this happen the most families see your enemy is many times your own family and they they either temporarily or permanently hate your guts extras they hate you your enemy hateful ones people who people who hate you so you go ahead and feed them anyway you give them something to drink because you're shaming them look I'm treating you with God's grace and you're treating me with Satan's abuse See, so the Holy Spirit then can use that later to save that person's soul. If you act like a sinner now and yell back at them and cuss them out, later on there'll be no salvation because they saw you as them. There isn't any way for you to witness to a sinner when you're sinning. See, if you're in bed and you're committing adultery, then you pray for somebody, those prayers aren't going to work. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> See, the shame and embarrassment and conviction of God comes on them. Hey, you mistreated that person. They were innocent. But you can't shame them into it. That has to be the Holy Ghost. He says, now, here, let me sum it up for you. Click. Boom. Nikao. Conquer evil. Don't be conquered by evil. You conquer evil. See, somebody screws me over, I don't take vengeance. I don't try to vindicate myself. God will do that for me at the appropriate time. Psalm 37. Right? Here it says, conquer evil. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer it with the opposite. If you act like a sinner, and then you witness to someone, you're in effect damning that person to hell. Why? Because they think God's as big a hypocrite as you are. That's right. That's right. You don't witness to somebody after you just stole stuff from a store with them. God, we've got a lot of stuff here. This is great. Oh gosh, my I'm getting convicted. Let's return that. That's not gonna work. You stole everything, and returning that is not gonna witness to this person. You're a thief. Yes. Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> She's deep. <laughs> See, 
See what Paul's saying here? Yeah, back there. Do not be conquered by it. Okay, well, so you're saying basically just give them love instead of quote scripture. Well, it depends. Now, if quoting scripture, <coughs> if you're a, a Mickey Mouse Christian, you're always throwing scriptures at people and so on. They've heard you do it before. I would not do that. Love is more important than quoting, throwing verses at people's faces. But what it's saying here is being conquered. Don't let, you might be overcome here. You might be overcome there, but you recover here and it didn't conquer you. In a war, you may lose a battle here and there, but the war you won, you were not conquered. See the difference? It doesn't mean you're conquered over every mistake. Oh, no, I'm not an overcomer. No, it's the whole picture. See? Everybody takes losses. Every Christian does. All of us do. See, but we're not conquered by them. That's a horse of a different color. See? A backslider is overcome or conquered by his sin, his disappointment, apathy, lukewarmness, surrender, cowardice, whatever it is. See? You conquer evil with what? You give them back good, see? Here's a drink. Here's some food. You hate my guts. <clears throat> That's in Father's hand, and I just chipped in on my reward in glory, so I'm rejoicing in hope of my future. All right, let's close. The Holy Spirit's trying to say something to us. What is he saying? Uh, you must be an overcomer, and you can overcome with these three chapters, 12, 13, 14, and Romans is the church what the church should be doing. Here's chapter 12, the introduction, church policies and procedures. A overcomer, a conqueror, will not go to hell. You might be conquered in this battle and that one, but you don't, not overall, you're not conquered, you go, you're going to heaven. Yeah. So you win, overall you win. Yes. He's talking to Christians. If you become conquerors, not fail once in a while. That's not what I was talking about. If you become conquerors, I will, one, let you eat of the tree of life and you live for eternity in your new glorified body in the city of the new Jerusalem. Incredible story. And that's in the middle of the paradise of God, by the way. You can conquer. You will wear the white clothing. Why? Because even if you were boiling and you went to lukewarm, you repented and you boiled that sucker up again by going through the fire. Yeah. Now you're back to boiling. And now, Jesus said, purchase the white clothing for glory. What's that? That's the clothing you wear in eternity. This isn't a new white outfit to go to the hospital. This is talking about eternal garb. Yes. If you become a conqueror, you will not get your name blotted out of the book of life. Right. What? I thought once it was in there, you're all unsaved, always saved. No. Snap out of it, dude. If you let your boiling go to lukewarm, oh, man, you're risking it. Yeah. And if you become a conqueror, think about it for a second. <clears throat> all the great conquerors of history Lost fights. Every single one. Name one. Alexander the Great. George Patton. Somebody somebody help me. Uh, Charlemagne. Uh, who else? The great conquerors. Constantine. Yeah. The great fighters. Genghis Khan. The great conquerors. Uh, who else? Napoleon. The great conquerors. They all got their butts whipped. See, in Christianity, here's how it works. You start out, and you're given the same measure of faith everybody else is. Click. And what you do with that faith determines your giftings and your anointings for the rest of your Christian life. Okay? All Christians lose battles. See? But not all Christians are conquered. See? The Jews, 37 times, were conquered in battle in the Old Testament. Then they became slaves. They were conquered by this country. 
Okay, losing a battle doesn't make you conquered. <coughs> It's the quitters and the cowards that are conquered. Yep. See? And if you don't get conquered and you overcome and you conquer, Father takes you. What was your ministry in life? What giftings did God give you? I was a caregiver. Come on up here and this is Father. There's Yahweh standing there. Caregiver. Why? Well, she had what God gave her, and she did the best with what she had. And maybe it wasn't as much as this person. Maybe it wasn't this and that. And maybe there was nobody there with a the camera. Father was there, saw the whole thing, and now he's he, the son is introducing her to him. I bought this one for you. Seat 22,345 at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's her seat. Well done, a good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Why? You lost a lot of battles, honey. Yeah, you had some tough patience. But you weren't conquered. You hung on and you won. See the difference? Yes. This is my son. This is my girl. This is my boy. Father, check him out. And Father doesn't go look down there and say, Wait a minute. I'm omniscient. You screwed up 2,225 times. You've passed gas 1,642 times. You No, he says, hey, the war's over. You conquered it. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Father doesn't nitpick what you did. It's all over. You were judged by Christ there, and he takes you up and then introduces you to Father. Amen. You're in. See, there's now no more condemnation, judgment to those who are in Christ. Come on. Amen. Click. Amen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was Romans 12. That's a great chapter, in my opinion. It's a beautiful chapter. Okay, next question. Shall we keep going here on Tuesday nights? Let's take a vote. Yes. Yes. Yeses. Raise your hands. All right. Most of them yeses. So that's what we'll do. We'll keep going then on Tuesday nights. The crowd was dwindling, so I thought maybe people were getting tired of it, but. We'll just press on through because these Bible studies are fantastic. Yes, they are. Yes. The word of God. They're, they're really good. It's important, yeah. Question there? It's not too much for you. Uh, it is tonight because I feel like I'm starting to come down with something. But normally, no, it's fine with me. How fast do the uh, teachings go uh, from here to YouTube, for example? You have to ask. <laughs> Kelly handles that, but I think it's right away. I mean, in my experience, she cranks us. She's very efficient. Yeah. yeah. In, in everything. She's like, you ever met somebody that kind of made you sick? They were so good at everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kelly will make you sick. Uh, she just gets everything done and works it all out. You know, if you're insecure, you start kind of feel it around those kind of people. <laughs> so. You know, I don't like to hang around her too much because she always does everything. No, she does it, in my experience, ch -ch -ch -ch, that's quick. It's usually pretty quick, yeah. The uh, witchcraft seminar, she sent me an email yesterday, I think. The witchcraft seminar, seminar had 2,000 hits uh, on it after a day and a half or so. Wow. And that, that's the most we've ever had. So the word's kind of getting out around the United States that, we, this is a different kind of place. <clears throat> it's not better than any other place, but it's very different than any other place. Yes. We have a very different ministry here. Yes. <clears throat> Could be. All right. Thank Lord. That was Romans 12. Lord, you were fantastic tonight. I mean, bravo. That was. I know that wasn't Paul. I know that was the Holy Ghost. Divinely inspiring him to give us literally life-saving material and that chapter 12 Lord Love you for it. That was life-saving material. I read tonight. It was fantastic. Well done Well done So tonight Lord after our teaching we have a 
prayer time for our friends. And I expect you, as usual, to send us the blessed Holy Spirit, the Great One. And I expect Him to do wonderful things like He, like he normally does. That's what He does. Because that's what He is. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. I pray, Lord, for each person here tonight that they will face their sin and repent of it. I pray if any person here took vengeance on anybody, tried to vindicate themselves, fought back like a sinner and acted like the world, I pray if there's anybody here who sketched themselves after the sin of the world, I pray tonight that they will take that sketch and just break it over their knees. I pray that tonight that they will decide and believe within themselves that, you know what? I've been called to live a different life than everybody else. I'm not to be like a regular Christian. I'm not to be like a sinner. I've been called by God to something special. And I read about it today in Romans chapter 12. And I know how to do it now because Brother Paul outlined those pitfalls for me and I can be a conqueror. And I'm going to wear white someday and he's going to introduce me my Heavenly Father. And I am looking forward to kicking the bucket and being introduced to Father. Amen. Amen. That's your kicking the bucket prayer. Remember that one. Yeah, I question that. I just that. wanted to say hello to you for tonight and make sure that I did say that to you. You remember Tim? The big young man? Yeah. Shook his hand back there. Yes. Yeah. He said hi to me tonight. He said for well, me to tell you hello. Oh, well, that's positive. Very positive. Will you tell him back? I, I hope so, but. What? I hope so. The only thing is that we're, both of us are concentrating on, our, on his daughters and my granddaughters, as you know. All right. Let's take Get a second fired. here. Lord, we're going to turn those children over to you tonight because you are. The master, the master of healing, delivering, and raising children. And I pray right now, if her son or her has any fear, worry, stress, or anxiety over their future or their condition, I'm asking you to help them repent of it and forsake it. And we are to cast all our care upon you because you care for us. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take all them kids. Everyone, how many of them are there? How many kids are there? Two kids. That's easy for you, Lord. They're falling off a log to take care of two kids. We're going to hand them two kids to you, and we're going to believe. And they are going to retain their peace and their joy. And so is he. Amen. Amen. Thank All right. you. you are dismissed. Okay. Thank you, Brother Mike. When you say you're dismissed and no one moves, that's a good sign. <laughs> it could be a bad sign, though. It could be some pollu pollutants in the air or some kind of toxins or maybe Corina brought some what do they call that stuff they chloroform that isn't good okay so hopefully Chlorina didn't do that she's going with me to LA by the way we're both going down the awesome. skid row together and to take our best swings at the devil Absolutely. and uh, we'll bring a full report when we get back unless of course it all goes bad and we're not going to say anything but <laughs> we're going to bring a full report after all these victories yeah, yeah, <laughs> amen all right all right yeah yes ma'am saturday yeah oh that's the fifth where you're going to a retreat and you don't know where it is? I just know that they're paying for it and they want me there and they're making me go. That, that entire sentence I do not like. All right. I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. All right. I don't pay attention too much. I just, I don't see the facts. I don't know if they're just taking me there. I mean, I've been there the whole time practicing and reading and scripture and no, but I'm just taking me there. So I just wonder if you're taking me there. Okay. Oh, it's in Scottsdale. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's not nicer than Skid Row. My <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yes, sir. Garlic. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah, if you got a cloud pineapple juice, is even better than cough syrup. Oh, it is? So I recommend Langer's. It doesn't have that high fructose crap. It's just juice. Langer's is good? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know any of that. Uh, yeah, the last time I got sick, I ate raw. You know, and I think I was back to work the next day. I wasn't sick for very long. So. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's good. Your wife may not uh, I'm married, sir. Uh, <laughs> the raw onion thing is not gonna gonna go well. But the pineapple, the pineapple thing, very good. Langers, you said. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It doesn't have high fructose, whatever that is. But apparently, that is, huh? Corn syrup, whatever that is. It doesn't have that. They're two different things. Fructose is, fructose different. is different from corn syrup. Yeah. See, this Bible study is tanked right now. <laughs> this thing went down fast. And I got to restore it here. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Who needs prayer? Come up here, please. And Car honey, Karina, can you come up on? Who else is? Who's here tonight? <coughs> is Kel Kelly here? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I thought she might have snuck out to fix something else and make it work perfectly. <laughs> Kelly and Karina here. That's all we need. Beautiful. Come down the front then. Anybody here need prayer or is this just questions tonight? That's it. Um, I yeah. I'm diagnosed. Well, I've been diagnosed with quite a few things since 2003. Now I'm quite an ultimate with psychotic whatever from schizophrenia to bipolar to my depressive. And now I'm ultimate with I'm not quite, I'm not first with the genetic disorder yet, but I think I am. No. So I'm just saying, would you deliver that? Come on. Oh, sure. Come here. <laughs> Come on, what's your name, hon? I'm Sheena. Okay. Thank you. Everything comes true that I see. So okay. Like now, oh, good. So you will be seeing this in a minute. Okay. All right, now, I just need you to listen to me and not say anything and close your eyes. Don't talk anymore. Don't talk anymore. Yep. Now, you see, <clears throat> streamers. No, I said... <laughs> Close your eyes and okay. don't talk anymore. Um, uh, on these real bad mental illnesses, you can uh, check them easy if you feel their eyes. Okay, so she does have either schizophrenia, bipolar, or something like that. Because if you feel their eyes like this, and they're they flicker like that. <laughs> No, okay, now I just said don't talk anymore. That's another thing. The demons snatch what you tell them. She, she's not trying to rebel against me. She literally just temporarily forgot everything I said. And that wasn't her, that was him doing it. He's in her, he's in her brain right here, and he's right in her frontal lobe where I'm touching him. And he's, he doesn't like me touching there. Okay. So you give them the eye check, that, that's 90% of the time that's going to be a valid check if they've got some kind of. SMI thing going, and she does. Okay. Secondly, <clears throat> streamers, when you have a girl like this, you just take a look at them, and then you get a feel for them. Okay. Now this girl here has basically a good heart. Yes. And she's actually a loving person. Yes. And she's been. Uh, it feels like verbal abuse. Somebody's beat her down when she was younger. Mm -hmm. It feels like verbal. And it also, she could have been molested. Now, these demons get in after the rejection demon gets in. Right. See? The rejection demon always gets in first. And that usually gets in in childhood. But the schizophrenia demon, or the borderline personality spirit, they don't usually get in until they're older. Teens, early 20s, something like that. So what you do when you start treating them, it's a process. We've had them completely healed here, and then we've had, had them not healed at all. Okay, it all depends on the person and how much uh, ability to cooperate they have left, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. okay, so it looks like, she, I'm getting a feeling here, she can be healed, this gal here. It looks like she wants to cooperate. Okay. So that's the kind of a sense. So you just kind of size them up. You got to do it quickly at the altar. You got to get a nice sizing of a person because you don't have a lot of time to kind of get a feel for them. Mm -hmm. See? So I know this person, 
has a good heart. I know she wants to serve God. You can feel that. And she also has unclean spirits. And those are spirits that cause vices. So the, that demon tells her when she's tormented by spirits in her mind, he tells her to eat to comfort herself. And they're the ones that cause you to abuse drugs and alcohol. Why they do that? The rejection demons <clears throat> allowing them to soothe their soul temporarily. But then when the drunk or the thing is passed, then they attack again. And the condition then clicks down again. It gets, keeps getting worse. The more they try to self-comfort or self-medicate, the worse it gets. Yeah. Long haul. Okay? So... Let's ask her a couple questions. Sweetheart, who hurt you when you was young? Then? I don't know. I don't remember. That's a good thing, right? Okay. You just said you don't remember. Close yeah. your eyes and yeah. stop talking. All right. Now, the demons are blocking out what was done to her. See? They scarred her soul and they hurt her. And then they tried to take, wipe out the evidence. You know, it's like somebody that wipes his fingerprints on a murder scene. Yep. Okay. So then, when you got in your young adulthood, were you promiscuous? Um, yeah, I guess. I wasn't like bad, but was more of a bully than. But yeah, yeah. I did dress for. Were you ever an addict? Yeah. What? Um, marijuana, meth, Armistead, everything. And that started at what age? Um, 14. Okay, see, the, see the pattern here? This is a typical pattern. The schizophrenia demon gets in after the rejection demon and lust demon drive them to drugs. And then it's easy to get schizophrenia if you're on crack or crystal meth or something like that. They, those are the worst drugs. And pot's the worst one for demons. They just kind of, they just skid in. It's utterly amazing. I don't exactly know how they do it. Okay. What's your name again? Sheena. Sheena. Raise your hand, sweetheart. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to pretend I'm Sheena right now. Lord, I came down to the house of healing tonight, and I'm in incredibly bad trouble. I'm in danger of losing the rest of my life to nothingness and evil spirits. They're trying to take over my mind. They're trying to take over my body. They want to give me Obesity, heart attack, diabetes, joint deficits. The spirits are attacking me day and night. And they're hurting me, Lord. And I want to tell you, I'm so sorry for what I did when I was young, a bully. The men I slept with, taking all them drugs, subconsciously trying to kill myself. Lord, I'm so incredibly sorry. Because I know when I did all those things, I hurt you. I hurt you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did. Because I love you. And I hurt you. And you're the only person I've ever known who unconditionally loves me. You're the only one. I am so sorry for hurting you, disobeying you, rebelling, living in sin, self-medicating myself with drugs and alcohol and food, for getting on the monster of meth, the killer. The drug that ruins lives. I'm so sorry. I'm praying right now you will forgive me for what I did. And have mercy on my soul. I want this evil rejection demon and this lust demon out of my body tonight. And I want all the spirits out one by one until we get down to him. And 
then he will go too. He will then go too. And I command these evil spirits that blocked my childhood memories to lift out of my head right now. I'm going to face those memories and I'm going to turn them over to you and let you remove them, not have a demon block them. I command this evil spirit that pulled me into drugs and made a fool out of me. I'm going to purposely forgive every person that ever hurt me. I'm going to purposely forgive everyone that ever hurt me. And I want this coward demon out of me, the one that makes me embarrassed right now, the one that's criticizing me and nitpicking me. I'm not standing right. I'm not praying right. I'm not holding my hands right. That's a demon telling me. He lied to me again. You love me no matter what I do. Sit or stand. Arms up or down. It doesn't matter. You just love me. And I'm asking right now, Lord, to give me the gift of hate. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. And I hate the spare in my head. I hate my sin. I hate these voices. I hate this anxiety, this nervous behavior. I hate it. And I want it out in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I want it out in the name of Jesus right now. Any spirit I picked up sleeping with a man, a transfer spirit, I want that man and that spirit out of my body now. I want them out tonight because I hate them now. I hate those devils. I hate the flesh, living fleshly and living in sin. I hate it. I hate evil spirits. I hate wickedness and evil. And I want them out tonight. I'm going to repent of my sin tonight. I'm going to do it right now. Dear God, please forgive me. Go ahead, honey. Come on. Okay, now. I'm a sinner. I haven't sinned in a while. Now the demon's got you talking now and looking at me. So let's stop him right now. Stop him. Okay. You're talking to the Lord right now. You're not talking to me, ma'am. I got nothing to do with your healing. I can't heal anybody. And you can't heal anybody either. Now, you've got to repent from your heart. You've got to mean it if you want to get healed. If you don't, then you, you're, you're done. Which is it? No, what are you going to do? Are you going to repent from your heart and pray like you mean it, or are you going to muffle through a prayer? Oh, that's not what I said. Now, you, you take it yourself. Dear Jesus, I am so sorry. Come on. Dear Jesus, I am sorry. Sincerely, I love you. There you go. I know that you died. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on, pray harder. Good girl, pray harder. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, spirits, I command you to start coming out of me. Just blow. Blow like that. Breathe out of your mouth. Good. Use your mind and command the devils to come out of you right now. Drugs and alcohol. Sex. Mocking spirit. Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Breathe. 
Who else needs prayer? Come up here real quick. Anybody else? Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Let's go. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. What you need, sir? Okay. Okay. I'll just close your eyes there. Yeah, I know it. Okay, just take a big breath. How'd you find out about us? Online? Okay. Take a breath. Take a big breath. There we go. Marie, close your eyes. All right. Now, these uh, streamers, uh, these super-powered lust demons, they're uh, serial adulterers, they're... They're gay, they're lesbian, they're, uh, they're really nasty. And they will not car. Come on, right now. Come on, you got to fight. Stop. You're laughing. I don't have anger in me, though. That's the only thing I don't know. You got laughter in you. I can't discern. I can't discern. Can you hear me? Yeah. You got laughter in you. Yeah. See that? That's demonic laughter. I know. Can I start rebuking that? It could be. Okay. All of it, is it could right. be you're laughing while you're going through deliverance, and you don't think that's not. No, I'm not laughing. I just I'm trying. I saw I'm you trying to try. Well, okay, I'm, okay, ma'am, I, I saw you. I don't realize it. Okay, oh, that's my job to see stuff you don't before, see. Before, like someone will talk about something. Really you do that disturbing all. Disturbing, and I. You didn't do that. That's them doing it. They're laughing because they know that you're not <laughs> going to cry, or you're not going to break down, and you're not sincere, and you're not going to fight them. I, well, now prove them wrong. How do I? Fight. Just, no, I just come on, say it. Now these other spirits this poor man's got. These evil spirits are powerful and they turn people into bisexuals or serial adulterers or lesbians. And they're so powerful that they can morph the person into the other sex. They'll masculinize a female. They'll feminize a male. They're really powerful demons. See? So the only way to get them out is if the person really repents with everything they've got. And this guy, uh, I'm kind of feeling this. I think this big guy is kind of close to being there. He's right there. He wants this thing out. And he's, he, he knows his future's doomed if that thing doesn't get out of there. He's doomed. Because these demons always come back and reacquire the person. They always go back to adultery. They always go back to oral sex. They always go back to homosexuality. These, these demons are super powered. Super powered. All right? So we're going to come against these spirits. This man of God. What was your first name? Jermaine. Oh, good. Lord, here's Jermaine. The man of God is standing here. And you've got a great ministry ahead for him to pray for people that have homosexual demons. Yeah. And see them delivered. He's going to pray for sick people and see them delivered. He's going to pray for perverts. He's going to pray for men who are hooked on porn. He's going to pray for men who are addicted to food and alcohol and drugs. There he is. That's the man right there. The big guy. But tonight, he's going to attack this pervert in his body. You stinking pervert. Come out. He, come out. Here he comes. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Come out. Ring. Go. Go. In Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Get out of that body and go. Come out, you pervert. Jesus, come out right now. Stop. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. Sean and William, come out. Come out. Come out right now. Sean and William. Go now. Go now. When you got powerful demons, you must attack with ferocity. Lunch and dinner prayers do not work. When you got lust demons, anger demons, bitterness, you got to attack with fury. I use my authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command you, you foul spirit, 
Come out! Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Sean and William. William. Sean and William. Come out now. Come out now. Sean, come out right now. Come out now. Sean, come out. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out, you Sean and William. Salvation. Go. Hating myself. Murder. Murder. William. Suicide. Murder. Suicide. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of that body. Come out of that body. Get out of my body right now. Say it. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Get out of my body. And a girl. Good girl. Good girl. That's how you fight. Good. You cannot get a demon out if you will not fight them. If you don't care, they don't care. If you're not going to do anything, they won't do anything. Come on now. If you got nasty spirits, you got to fight with fury. You got to take command. Get out of that body right now. Sodomy, go! Sodomy, go! Lust, go! Lust, go in Jesus' mighty name. I bind your power, you filthy pig. Come out now! Come out of his feet. Come out of his head. All the way out. Go. Come out right now. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Get out of my body. Fight harder. Come on, sweetheart. Father, where she will, do what I tell you. Tell him to come out. In the name of Jesus. Come out of me. Get mad. Get mad. Where's your righteous indignation? Who has it? Anger and rage. Come out of my body. Sickness. I bind your power. I command you to go. Fight harder. Listen, if you want to get into a coward ministry or something that has no pressure, go ahead and go drive the school bus or usher over at the church. This is a deliverance and healing ministry. You gotta have a different attitude over here. See, it's an attitude adjustment, streamers. You gotta take command over the devil. You're not ushering people to a seat. Anybody with demons can do that. That's no big deal. Where do you want to sit? Over here, come with me. Oh, there you go. That's my ministry. This is a different kind of ministry. It's not better than ushering. Ushering is fine. But you gotta be able to fight. You gotta fight. Back. You gotta fight back. You gotta do it now. Come on. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Man of God, fight harder. I believe you have a spirit. What are you doing? Okay, you just said something negative. You put that thought in your mind. Repent of it. Repent of what you said. You said you don't think you have anything. What? I mean, I don't. I don't think I do. You just fell for the biggest joke in the spirit world. That's the biggest joke they ever put on the person. I've heard that a hundred times. I don't have any demons. Okay, then go ahead and get rid of the rejection demon. Let's go. Uh huh. Get him up. You, why you were just doing it? You were just doing it. I was just coughing. Those were demons coming out. No, I've seen demons. Okay. No, ma'am, you're not you're not coming here to tell us how to do deliverance. That's your demon telling me what to do. You don't understand. You don't come here and have your demons tell me what to do. That's a rebellion demon. Get him out. Who gave him to you? Okay. Now, I, this gal had schizophrenia was doing really good, and then she stalled. The demons took her mind, and we lost her here. Satan, lose your hold. Go! Come out now. Go! Come out of there, you pig. You pervert. Come out, buddy. 
Come out right now. Come out quick or go. Get out of spine. Right now. Lust. Bitterness. Anger. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out now, right in Jesus' name. No, come out, Nicholas. Come out, Yeah, no. What do you feel in my eyes? You got schizophrenia, schizoaffective in there. Demons. My father is very schizophrenic. Yeah. My mother. Your, your dad's demons are in your head. It isn't worse. It's a much worse. Well, thank God. You got the father's demons that are weaker. You better get them out. Uh, no, it hasn't. You're deceived. They're making a fool out of you. They make a fool out of you. Now you come back next week and you'll see I'm right. Okay, that's that's what you've got. You're, you're a fool. You're deceived. I know. Lord, I want you to show her whatever you have to show her. No matter how bad it is, I want you to show her. Amen. Okay. Satan, I command you to come out. I hate your guts. I hate your guts and get out. You think I'm going to die and end up in a coffin? That's not going to happen. Come out. See, if you got anger demons, you got to get angry at them. Streamers, if you've got anger spirits, you can't casually get out an anger spirit. you got to take command, attack. You know what attack mode is? Boom, you fight like this. Get out of my head, you spirit of infirmity. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my head right this second. Amen. Get out now. Amen. Now go. I bind your power. Sin, come out of me. Sin. I'll repair my sin. Right now. Come out of me. Come out of me. Come out, you pervert. Get out of there, you pervert. Anger and rage and self-hatred. Come out right now. Chronic masturbation. Come out of me right now. Chronic masturbation. I bind your power. Chronic masturbation. I bind your power. Lost demon. Come out of my groin. Come out of my genitals. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Self pity. Get out. Self pity and anger. Get out. The man of God. Come out of the faith healer right now. Come out of me. Come out of me right this second. Come out of that faith healer. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of Come out of that neck. Come out of his mind. Come out of that mind, you pervert. Get out. Come out, you pervert. I want you out in the name of the Lord. Resentment and anger and bitterness. Come out. Get out. Amen. Amen. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. Bestiality. Come out. Fornication. Come out. Lusting after women. Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. Come out. Get out. Lusting after men. Come out of me. Stupidity. Come out of my head. Come out. Now. Out. Out in the name of the Lord. Go. Mind control spirit. Come out of me. Go. Mind control. Go now. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Pick who you hate tonight. Who do you hate tonight? Sin, rejection, the devil, demons, wickedness, lust. Do you hate that? It will go. If you don't hate it, you got to keep it. Come out now. The demons are wasting your life. You've lost so many years. It's unbelievable. You're going to take them back tonight. That's right. But you can't casually take them back. This is a war. See, the devil, he won't give stuff up. Christians give ground all the time. They just collapse like accordions. Demons won't collapse like accordions. They'll, they'll hold their ground until you use your anointing and get rid of them. Coming out now. Find you. Get out. Yes, sir. I command that demon that stole my childhood memories to come out right now so I can be healed. Get out. <clears throat> streamers if you got mind control spirits and they stole your memories what they're doing is they're hurting your soul and then the memories disappear so you can't track them you can't track them 
spells and curses. But if you can track them back to the person that hurt you and the incident that hurts your soul, you can track them back. You can cast that out of your soul and be healed. Are they demonic too? Yeah. Extremers. Uh, anything extraterrestrial, UFOs, Bigfoots, anything like that, it's all demonic. There are no UFOs. There's no Bigfoot. No, there's not. There's none of that stuff. Extraterrestrials are not there. It's all Satan, fooling, stupid Christians. It's the number of men. The devil, fooling, stupid Christians. Okay? Cast them out. Extraterrestrial. Come out of me. Come out. No, don't touch him. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Extraterrestrials, come out of my body. Come out now in Jesus' name. Go. Get him out of you. You believe in extraterrestrials? You believe that? Just repent of it. Just repent of extraterrestrials. Okay, the flying saucers. Just repent of it. Repent of it. Bigfoot. That's a croc foot. There is no big foot. Those are sight ears. They're in the Old Testament. Those are the animal spirits in the Old Testament. It says it right in Isaiah 34. It's not big foot. It's a sight ear. Big foot. You got a big mouth is what you've got. Just repent of it. I repent of my big mouth promulgating ignorant asinine material that's used to fear and confuse people. I repent of that stupidity you rap now. Go in Jesus' money. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out now. Go. Go now. Satan, lose your hold. It's called spiritual warfare, streamers. Watching something. War is coming very soon. Mm. Don't worry about that. You speak in tongues? I've never, well, I mean, in a, in a, I've heard it. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you've got to speak in tongues. Turn around this way so nobody can see you. Okay. Now, you see the negative thoughts running in your head right now? Those are from demons. They're in your brain. Those weren't your thoughts. They always say negative things. Unless you're a chronic negative person, are you? I may be self-defeating. Hmm? You're, self you're a self-defeating person? Okay. So you're telling me those negative thoughts come from you? They're not coming from you because they just come right out without you even thinking. You just, just automatically say it. So that's them. They're in your brain, taking over your mind, and they're making a fool out of you. So, you're just waking up. What I want you to do is spiritually wake up right now. Now, the Bible says that you already have your gift of tongues if you're a born-again Christian. Are you a born-again Christian? Yeah. Okay. It's in your spirit, man. Okay, now you're talking again, negative. See that? You just suddenly, instantaneously start saying something negative. See that demon talking to me? See how he works? God is allowing this to happen tonight, and I'm pointing it out to save your soul. He's showing you you're deceived. Your car? What car? Okay, that was a thought that was ignorant, and it came from a demon. That wasn't you saying something stupid, is it? You you said that to me? I see different. I think in different ways. You think in different ways. See what I mean? Right. You you think in different ways and you sound like an idiot. You with me? That's not you. That's a spirit making you look like an idiot. It's okay with you. Okay, that's it. No, listen to me. Listen to me. How do I show myself not naked? Hey. How do I clothe myself? If it's if it's okay with you to sound like an idiot, then there's nothing we can do. If I'm speaking from my heart, I think we can't do anything to help you if you think it's okay to be an idiot. Well, not really, no, it's not. Well, then why'd you say something stupid? I didn't think it was stupid. That's why. You you didn't think it was stupid. You mean your IQ so low? You didn't think that statement was stupid? And who told you your IQ was low? You just did. They did. No, I asked you if your IQ is low. Now who? 
who misinterpreted that question? They did. You've got brain demons. They're taking over your mind. I take an injection every three weeks. Is there a because you're, if you, they give you an injection because you're mentally ill. They, they give you an injection because you're mentally ill. You're not mentally ill. It's demons in your brain. You're not mentally ill. If you can do it, take them out. I can't no, do it. I you can't. Do it. I can't take them out because you don't want them out. I don't want them out. You're not listening and you're not repenting. See? The schizophrenics we all had healed here had the opposite attitude of you. They came here and they listened and they obeyed. Okay, you're doing the opposite. You're laughing, you're making fun of everything. Well, you, you're not trying to, but you're doing it. And so when I'm catching it for you to save your life, you're not receiving it. You're still acting like a fool by not listening. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. There's nothing wrong with you. You're an intelligent person. They're fooling you, and they've made a complete laughing stock out of you. The demons say stupid stuff, and you don't just say it here at the altar with me. You say stupid stuff out there, and other people see you as cuckoo. Correct? Okay. I know my business. You will never be healed, and you'll be my age in your 60s in this condition, and worse, if you don't repent and change. I'm giving you my word of honor that you are going to die sick and lost if you do not repent and change. Now, if you want somebody to lie to you and tell you you're fine, go to that church down the street. They'll tell you you're fine. My job... My turn. Huh? My turn. Your turn. Yes. Forgive me for what you just said. You don't need to forgive me for what I... Oh, don't forgive me. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't accept that forgiveness. I did not do anything wrong. I'm trying to save your life. I don't accept what you just told me. Well, then that's, that's what I mean. Go down the street and talk to somebody who will give you what you want to hear. Okay? So the Bible says you either repent and change or you are going to die sick. That's what the Bible says. Now, if you don't like God's word, it says it all over the Bible. You repent of your sin and you change your life or you die sick. I've changed my life completely around. The way I used to live, I used to rob used to No, sweetheart, you've made a lot of improvements, but you haven't got all the spirits out. When people come here, they want to get the rest of the spirits out. Okay? I'm afraid that the ones that, if possible, if I'm speaking like the ones that come out, because they leave and go other places, they bring seven more. Okay, that's a lie. They can't do that if you repent and fill your house up with. If you keep sinning and you cast out demons, then they will come back. That is correct. But when you come here, you are to repent of your sin and change your life and get the demons out, and then they cannot come back. That's what the Bible says. That's what it says. Okay. We'll be back when you're ready. That's a fair answer. Okay. Bye bye. I tried. She's attached her identity to her spirit. She what? She attached her identity with her Oh, yeah. Spirit. yeah. <laughs> All right. Satan. Now, if you're doing deliverance on yourself and the demons are not coming out, streamers, that means they know something you don't know. They know something you don't know. There's something in your soul, in your mind, there's a belief system, there's a thought, there's doubt, there's something down there. So all you do then, if you're not getting the demons out, just take a pause, just rest for a minute, and ask the Lord to tell you, just put your hands on your head. Father, the spirits are not coming out. That means that they know something I don't know. They're holding on to something. They have legal rights of some kind. They're doing something. And I'm asking you right now, whatever that is, to reveal it to me so I can confess it and repent of it. If the demons are not coming out, that means you are missing something. You're missing something. Okay? So let's say you've got a lust spirit, a sickness spirit, uh, an infirmity spirit, uh, bitterness, something like that. 
okay? And you've told it to come out and it didn't come out. Well, it has to come out in the name of Jesus. If it doesn't come out, it means it's got legal rights that you gave them to stay in your head or stay in your body. So all you have to do is do some self-reflection. Lord Jesus, reveal it to me. Tell me what it is that's keeping these monsters in my body. Tell me what I'm thinking. Tell me what I'm doing. What mistake am I making? What am I overlooking? Anything like that. Those are really good prayers. They're honest prayers, and God will answer those prayers. If you admit to him you don't know what the problem is, and you're, you want to figure out what it is, and anything he tells you, you will fix no matter what it is. doesn't matter. You'll fix it, even if something you don't want to fix. Now, that poor schizophrenia girl, I couldn't get through to her tonight, and she left with all of her demons. She didn't want to hear me. So we, we live, win some, we lose some. But you are winning. You're winning. You're going to ask God, what am I missing that causes this repetitive, continuous deficit in my life? You have a repetitive, continuous deficit. Right? And you want to know what it is. Father, in Jesus' name, by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I come to you right now. And the devil has got one up on me here. This stuff's supposed to have been out two years ago, and it's still hanging around. I'm still sick. It's got to be something within me. I know it's nothing within you. I know you want to heal and deliver everybody, so I know it's not your fault, Lord Jesus. Something in me is blocking my healing. And I'm praying right now you reveal it to me. Reveal it to me, Lord. Reveal it to me. What is it? What do I need to repent of? What do I need to change? Who do I need to apologize to? Where do, is it restitution? Did I take something? Did I steal something? Can I return it? Do I need to apologize? Is it a is it a mother father curse? Is it bad feelings about my crazy parents? My mom and dad, they're both nuts. They treated me like garbage for years. Maybe I got bad feelings, ought, bad emotions for my parents. Whatever it is, streamers, just confess it. Confess it. Is it arrogance, pride, and ego? Is that it? Oh my God, that has got to come out. That's got to come out because that's fool's gold. Arrogance, pride, and ego is fool's gold. It's a delusion from Satan. He's, he's telling you you're something and you're good at something when you're actually a certified jackass. It's a fool's gold. Arrogance, pride, and ego is a fool's gold. That will evaporate on you. You'll go to the bank and it will cash it in for nothing. Hey, you got suckered in on a deal on that one. That's fool's gold. Paul taught us tonight in Romans 12. We are to act like regular people and just be humble people and just be f a regular person. This isn't a TV preacher mill down here. This is a healing facility. Come on. Lord Jesus, reveal it to me. Tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me what my problem is. Sweet Jesus, save me. Save me, Lord. Be like Peter. Scream out the waters. Lord, save me. God, save me. Reveal it to me. What am I overlooking? There's nothing to be ashamed of to overlook something. Everybody does it. Just ask God. Lord, I'm, I'm missing something. This should have been fixed two years ago, and I'm still suffering with it. Okay, that means I'm missing something. Dearest God, please forgive me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, the whole nice night was worth it just to see you touch this big guy. Yes. Yes. I'll tell you what. People don't understand that <clears throat> this kind of ministry, ministry is very hard, yes. but it's got rich rewards. Yes, it does. See? Not materially. No, there's no money in it. There's no glory in it. But seeing that poor guy get a touch, yes. wow, that is. Lord, thank you. Precious. Lord, we give you praise. Tonight. Thank you, Jesus. All that. 
unforgiveness and bitterness going out. All that stuff's like a cancer, kill you. Lord, I pray for every streamer that hates their parents. Every one of them. They cursed their parents. They yelled at them. They, they degraded them. They deliberately angered them. They embarrassed them in public. They said negative things about them in front of other people, church people, family, co-workers. That the word that they said boomerang right back to them well tonight we repent of it right now I ask you to bless my mom and dad I ask you to forgive me for hurting them I will call them and apologize if they're still alive if they're not I will apologize to you Lord I'm sorry my dad died and he's in glory and uh, Lord Jesus I'm so sorry I hurt him I, uh, I was living in sin I was deceived so I thought he was a crazy man and I let him have it. You fat, ugly, lazy, stupid, rotten SOB. That's what I said, Lord. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of it. I reamed my dad out. I blasted my mo mother, called her a B word, C word, reamed her out. Well, what I did when I did that, Lord, I put a curse on me. Click. It just clicked right on top of me. And my life has been a failure ever since. Well, that's going to stop now. My stinking life as a failure ends tonight. God bless my mom and dad and love them. Jesus have mercy upon my mom. And I don't care what they did to me. I don't care if my mother sold me to a prostitution ring. God love her. Bless her right now. I don't care if my dad handed me over to gypsies. I love my dad. God bless you. Love you, daddy. Forgive you. I forgive you, dad. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for touching that big guy, Lord. You made my night. See, you can get delivered like anybody can if they fight like that guy did. See, but if you sit around staring at the walls or peeking at the ceiling or like that poor schizophrenia gal trying to argue me out of her healing, once you do that, you haven't got a ghost of chance of hell to get healed. Welcome to keeping demons. There was altars in there. There was one. There was altars in there. Yeah. There was hangers in her head. Absolutely. And uh, once you get into the keep your demons club, man, that's a hard club to get out of. Absolutely. Really hard. That takes some tears. That takes some brokenness. That takes some fire. Yes. That takes layers. some guts. What about these layers we talked about before? Layers. layers. Yeah, you got to get so all the I, layers when, out. When it, when you when I've defended. The, the the sins that I've had is it you is defended that, them? Well, I did at one point. Yeah, in the past. Yeah, in the past. Yeah. I'm not defending them anymore. I mean, no. I quit my job, dude. I'm doing this. I'm kidding. These are coming out. This you is coming out. Job. I quit my job because I can't work. Oh. I told you. I don't know if you remember, but I mean, you talked to a lot of people. But um, I, 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 do, I did. I've been doing sales for years, and because of the emotion that I'm putting off, I, I can't. People don't want to trust me. Oh, and I know I that. I know that. I'm just like, you know what, Lord? I don't need this job. You can have it. Yeah, Satan can have it. He's been stealing my money anyways. Gotcha. Now, what this guy just told me was. <clears throat> Something about his job, and he just quit his job. Well, here's the deal. He's in sales, and the people are sensing something about him. Okay? What they're sensing is what's in your soul. It's not the spirit man. In his spirit man, this guy's a strong Christian and a good man. In his soul, he's got some stank in there. See, that's what they call it in the business, stank. Stank, yeah. And then in the soul, stank comes out and other people can feel it and sense it when they look at them, talk to them, relate to them. They feel an uncomfortableness about it. And it feels like something there about anger or rage or frustration or something in the soul. See? Yeah. And people can sense it. If you're in a sales job, that's sure. the worst thing you can have. Oh, yeah. Because uh, pe people, uh, you're trying to sell them something and be their friend for a while. Oh, yeah. But they can kind of sense like, oh, there's something, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, Martha, but this guy here, let's, let's get out the dope. Well, I've had my, one of my best <laughs> friends who's a mentor to me. He told he's me, he, he's one of my best friends, he's a mentor to me mentor. that I've been working for for a long time.
told me, he goes, Eric, you got a black cloud following you. And he, he just became a Christian not too long ago. So I've been talking to him about it. And I'm like, it's not a black cloud. It's not. It's, it's your not soul. Like, it's, yeah. It's, and, and, and then when I, another person has, like, I've had several people tell me, you got black cloud over you. Everywhere you go, there's, and, and I'm like, yeah. you don't have to tell me. Spiritual. I live it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm living it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, uh, can you guys see him talking right now? Yeah. yeah. Can you see him talking? That is that soul thing coming out. You notice how intense he is? <clears throat> Did you notice that? Yep. He probably didn't notice it because he talks like that normally. But that's when you're ministering to somebody, that thrusting in the emotions, that's that soul. Yes. That's the, the wound. You notice how you were intensely talking to me? You said, I'm living it. Yeah. You said, yeah. yeah. See, that? that's him. That's the soul thing in there right. coming out. So you can... When you're talking to somebody, they're easy to diagnose just by watching their facial expressions, body language, tone of voice. And he knows that better than I do. He's in sales. So all that stuff is very pertinent sales. Yeah. Transfer of feeling. And if I have bad feelings, if I have bad emotion, they don't want it. No. They don't want, they want me out. That's right. Exactly. So I know how to fix this. Let's pray for this faith healer here. Yes. He's supposed to be healing people, not uh, collapsing with a soul in poverty with no job. Okay? What he needs to get from God is the gift of tears. Yeah. Okay? Not tears over how bad things are. Those tears are, that's self-pity and sorrow. Godly sorrow, godly tears. Those heal the soul, and that's what he wants healed, his soul. See? As soon as that, as soon as that happens... People will be flocking around him like he's a teddy bear. Yes. Now they kind of look at him and get a bad sense and go, man, I think I'll sit over here. Yeah. And they'll try to move out on him. See? And, and, and in particularly, complex for a long time. I was like, what's wrong with me? He gave you a complex. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not me. It's the demon. It's right. It's yeah. not you. Exactly. Thank you. That you know, was well done. Well, you told me that. You hear what he said? It's not him. It's the demon. It's the thing in the soul. It's not him. He's actually a good man of God. He's got a gentle spirit, but it's being overrun by this soul stuff. So, Lord, whenever you're going to do it, wherever you're going to do it, I want you to touch my friend. Because I know he has a great future in ministry and helping others and being strong and preaching and teaching and everything. But this scar on his soul is a bad one. And the gift of tears from the Holy Ghost will bring this thing out. And I'm asking you to give him the gift of tears. While I'm asking for that, I'm asking for that big guy right down there. I want you to give him the gift of tears too. So these spirits can't get back in him when he leaves tonight. Gift of godly sorrow tears is the ticket to drawing in the Holy Spirit and healing the human soul. So is that the same as hate? Mm -hmm. Is that no. the same as the glorious gift of hate? No. Godly tears are between you and the Lord. This is between you and him, your love for him, your sorrow that you hurt him, your best friend, you stabbed him in the back, and now it's just suddenly come to you that, oh my goodness, all these people don't like me, but that's not the worst of it. I've actually hurt God. See, the tears over sadness and sorrow over your bad situation doesn't do any good. That's just an expression of self-pity, and that's just the body relieving stress. Okay? Godly tears is different. That's a soul healer. Yes. So when you stab your parents, your brothers, your neighbors in the back, <clears throat> you hurt God more than you hurt them. And he was hurt over because he loves them like he loves you. So, Lord, give him this gentle, loving, gentle, sweet gift of tears to love you and to know you intimately, lovingly. And break this horrible rebellion demon. Thank you so much for helping this big guy here. I've made my night, Lord. It was a miracle. And thank you for his attitude. He showed everybody else here how to do it. I needed somebody to lead the way, and you sent him tonight. So I got, I got lucky. Thank you, Jesus. Kelly sees his pearly whites. She'll probably go up and fix them. Get everything working out right. Streamers, go to the website 
and hit the post deliverance button so you do not lose your deliverance or healing you got tonight. Okay? Then go to the teaching button and hit the teaching how Satan controls the mind. It's a life-saving revelation. Thank you for your donations tonight, saints of God. I will not be here Friday. I will be on Skid Row. The preacher from the jails, Rick Cat, will be here Friday. He's going to kill it. He always does. Bring your sick people. Bring your people to have demons. Man, he'll blow those things out. God love you, streamers. I'll be back Tuesday, 7 o'clock. I'll be back Friday. I'll see you next time.